some of you might have seen this thing on my desk in recent videos. This is the Widgie Dash PC command panel from G Skill. The name kind of makes it sound like a type of Pokemon. At least that's what I thought. It's not a Pokemon though, it's a touchscreen PC control panel with some pretty cool tricks up its sleeves. Let's see exactly what this little screen can do. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So this is the Widgy Dash, a weird name as I just mentioned. It's a seven inch touchscreen panel that connects to your PC to allow for stuff like displaying PC stats, controlling media, opening files and so on and so forth. It'll set you back roughly 130 quid. One big positive over other sensor panels that people stick in cases in mod videos and stuff like that, or other like small monitors that you can attach to the computer, is that the Widgie Dash is powered and handles the display all over one USB cable. So you won't need to connect it to a video port on your graphics card, and it doesn't behave like an extra display in Windows, so there's no accidentally moving your mouse onto it and then spending five minutes looking for a mouse cursor. Before we dive into what this panel can do then, let's talk briefly about the design and the build quality. The screen is a capacitive 7 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels and a max brightness of 300 nits. It easily gets bright enough for its use, sitting on a desk. I can't imagine anyone ever using it outside, so that 300 nits is plenty. The screen sits inside a plastic housing, which has a built-in stand to prop it up like it is on the desk in front of me now. Disappointingly though, there's no way to adjust it. It's either that angle or flat. There's some G-Skill branding on the bottom bezel, just below that screen, but other than that, it's plain black plastic everywhere. The bottom has a pretty big rubber pad to provide some grip if you do decide to place it flat on a desk, although I can't see why anyone would place it like that as it's not the most comfortable or ergonomic to use it. The overall build of the Widget Dash feels good, but it is let down by the stand a little bit, which feels really flimsy and cheap and it wobbles around a little bit. It's really easy to clip off. It just clips onto the sides with two little kind of plastic nibs, for lack of a better word. There's a 1.8 meter USB cable in the box. And as I mentioned, that cable handles both the power and the display signal. It's a straight USB cable in terms of the connector, I mean, which does lead to the cable sticking out a bit when it's connected to the upper right corner, your upper left corner, the way you're looking at it. I think a right, a right angled cable connector would have looked so much cleaner. There's also a 20 pin port hidden away under a rubber cover on the bottom, which I couldn't find any reference to in the documents sent over to me by G-School. So I reached out to them and they confirmed that it's a port for developers to connect to the device when working on software and plugins. I thought it was a USB header to connect it to a USB header inside of a case, but that's not the case. It's for development and troubleshooting and that sort of stuff. The design of the panel is pretty decent and it feels well made and robust, but it's the software that is the really important aspect of any product like this. Everything hinges on what it can do and how easy it is to configure. The Widgetask Manager software handles all of that stuff. I'll first run through how it works and what you can do before talking about what I like and what I don't like about the software and about interacting with the device. The software is made up of two main sections. On the left hand side, you'll have a virtual representation of the device. And then on the right hand side is where you'll find the widgets that can be added to the display. The device's display is split up into 20 kind of blocks or zones into which you can drag and drop widgets from the right hand side to the left hand side. And they can be customized to execute actions and display various information. The selection of widgets is governed by which plugins you've got installed and each one is listed down the right hand side of that software once they've been installed with small buttons to select what size widget you would like to add to that display. 
Clicking on the market button down the bottom will show you all of the available plugins, which disappointingly there are only 11 available at the time of me making this video. The Widgidash ecosystem definitely needs to mature and to be fleshed out a lot for it to compete with competitor products like the Stream Deck. I've got every available plugin installed, all 11 of them, so I'll run through what they are and what each one can do. Ada64 allows you to display information from any Ada64 stats via the sensor panel feature. There are some preset panels available from G-Skill and the instructions to add them to Ada and to get them shown on the widget ass are pretty straightforward and easy to follow. There is a bit of tinkering required, but it's nothing too crazy. Audio visualizer will add an EQ visualizer to the display. And when you click on this or any widget, you'll get options for customizing it in the bottom right of Widget Ask Manager. The audio visualizer lets you choose which audio device it will kind of listen to for the data that it shows on the graph, a feature which is missing in other key areas, which I'll mention later in the video. Clock is pretty straightforward. It's a widget that shows a clock, funnily enough. There's not much in the shape of customization though. It's a digital only clock of which you can change the format and the font and pretty much nothing else. Now Hotkey, that was one of the most interesting widgets for me coming into this review. I had visions of setting up hotkeys for every function I currently have on my stream deck and trying to mirror the functionality on the widget dash. I very quickly found out that while that is possible to a certain extent, the widget dash isn't as clever as I'd hoped it would be. Each hotkey you assign can have one or more hotkey actions assigned to it. Stuff like opening web pages and switching widget ass pages is simple and it works well, but opening software caused me some issues. OBS would not open when the hotkey was linked to the executable for that program and it had to be linked to a shortcut. But this is more than likely an OBS restriction though and I can't really blame the widget dash or the widget dash software. Opening Windows Store apps just doesn't work, flat out doesn't work, Spotify just refuses to open when you set it up to open through the hotkey on the widget dash. Media Keys is missing the option to choose which device you want to control, which is really important on volume up and down, especially in my case as I've got my audio sources split out on my PC using Elgato's Wavelink, and there's no way for me to tell that media hotkey that's set up which audio device I want to adjust the volume of making that hotkey pretty useless or completely useless. So for example, I have my voice chat coming through Wavelink voice chat when I look at my sound sources in Windows and there's no way for me to tell the widget ass hotkey that that's the source that I want to change the volume of. I could go on and on about hotkeys, but the bottom line is for simple stuff, they work well. For anything that requires a bit of complexity, I just kept running into issues. Not major issues though, so I can't moan too much and hopefully with a few more software updates, the functionality of the hotkey widget can be improved quite a lot. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. Moving on then, hardware info. This is basically a stripped down version of the Ada64 functionality, which reads information obviously from hardware info instead of Ada64. It's much simpler and it only allows for one by one sized widgets to be placed on the screen. Picture is another straightforward one. You can add static images or GIFs to the display, useful for stylizing the widget dash and making it a bit more unique to you. Spotify, as the name suggests, handles Spotify music control and it works well-ish. It can't be resized from the default two by one option, so it's quite small when you see it on the screen of the device itself. It shows album art, track time, the device, and the user that Spotify is currently playing on and playing to, but it doesn't work with podcasts at all. I listen to quite a lot of podcasts, and this thing, it just doesn't update when I switch to a podcast on Spotify. It just sticks on the previous track that I was listening to. Stopwatch, again, is another simple one. A stopwatch that you can tap to start or stop, and you can change it to be a countdown timer if you want to, although you can't change it on the device itself from stopwatch mode to countdown mode. You have to do that inside the software, which on device customization would be a big benefit to this device. The ticker widget can show you stock prices or currency conversion rates. 
completely useless on me, but it's there if that's what you're into and you want it, I guess. Twitch chat will display the chat from any channel on Twitch. Now, before I set this up, I expected it only to work with my own channel, not that I stream, but I do have a Twitch channel. And after logging in, in the widget options, it pulled through 20 of my followed channels and I had to then manually add my own. I guess seeing someone else's chat on the widget dash might be useful for like chat mods maybe, or if you want to watch a stream full screen and have the chat off your monitors and on this little display on your desktop, maybe. You can tap on the widget on the device and select any of the channels you've added, and then you can view the chat of that. So it even you don't even need to have the Twitch open on your monitor. It will just monitor that person's chat if they're live and show you what's going on in the chat, which is a bit... It's clever, but I can't see much actual real world use to it. And that works the same when looking at your own chat. It updates almost instantly. I tested it, I went onto my own channel, went into the chat, there was no one else in there apart from me, but I typed some messages in and they pretty much instantly appear on the little display. It's a one way deal though, you can't interact with the chat from the widget dash. You can only read the messages that are coming through. And finally, we have the weather widget configurable to show weather for a chosen location. I'm guessing anywhere in the world, I didn't have time to check every location in the world, but I checked a few different ones and they all worked relatively easily and quickly. So let's talk about the good points and the stuff that I like. One of the main features and where the widget dash shines is the support for Ada64 sensor panels. The panel can display any stat from Ada64 and they'll update in real time. And I found it really useful to have that info at a glance on my desk. A downside to that though is that Ada64 isn't freeware, it's a paid license. So you're gonna have to factor in the cost of that software if you don't already own it. The base version costs $60. You can tweak the panel to your heart's content within Ada, changing pretty much anything you want from fonts, colors, titles, sizing, and so on and so forth. If you don't want to stump up the cost for an Ada license though, you can opt to go down the hardware info route, which is free software, but the support on the panel itself is much more limited. Hardware info stats can be placed on one by one sized widgets on the display, and then you can customize them using the widget dash software but you can't resize them, it's one by one or nothing. The Spotify integration works okay. I like the live album art and track control. I listen to Spotify a lot and having the controls just to the right of my mouse pad is nice. I have this on my stream deck, but currently, in my opinion, the widget dash does it better and it looks better. However, there are certain aspects of the functionality that I think need a lot of work and improvement. For example, and as I briefly mentioned earlier, I use Elgato's Wavelink software on my PC. It controls my audio inputs and outputs. This means that the devices that I need to control the volume of on my PC are not standard Windows output devices, like it's not just speakers or whatever, it's Wavelink voice chat, Wavelink browser, Wavelink comms. Anyone that has used Wavelink will know what I'm talking about. But due to that, changing volume or muting audio with the widget dash doesn't do anything at all. It really needs the option to select which device the media key widget is controlling. You need to be able to specify what audio device you want to take control of. Also, the sizing available on some widgets is very restrictive and I just don't understand why they've done it this way. I can place a hotkey and I can customize it to be any size that I want but the majority of the rest of the widgets are limited to specific sizes and there's no way to resize them. It's maybe due to the aspect ratio of certain widgets only working at specific sizes, but I'm not really buying that as a valid reason for that resizing option being missing. The widget should be designed to be dynamically resized and to should just fit whatever the user wants. The software isn't very intuitive. Creating a string of actions, which are called rules, can feel a little confusing. You can link certain actions together, like adding a program to open after switching to a certain widget dash page, for example, but the software won't open Windows Store apps. So I tried to set one up to open the Spotify app when I switched to a page that I got set up and set up out of the box for music control, and it just doesn't work. I also had issues with opening OBS from the widget dash panel. I get a missing file error, which after some research is caused due to OBS trying to be opened externally from the folder where it's installed. 
I had to set up a shortcut for OBS and then link to that for the button to work. An official OBS plugin would solve this. The, the OBS functionality, that, that error opening stuff is probably on the OBS side, but an official plugin would fix it. And that leads me on to other OBS functionality as I'm sure a lot of streamers will look at this. Due to there being no official support, OBS functionality has to be configured using hotkeys, which does work. And I managed to create a page for switching scenes, muting and unmuting my mic, showing and hiding my camera, and then starting and stopping recording. It would be easy to do it for streaming as well. But it's just a faff compared to having these functions on the widget dash to begin with. With hotkeys, you have to configure the hotkeys in OBS and then come and configure stuff in the Widget Dash software as well. It's twice the amount of effort to achieve what you can do on a Stream Deck. You can swipe between pages, but it does sometimes feel a little slow and unresponsive, as does clicking on widgets in the software. That's slow and unresponsive as well. Several times I've had to click on a widget two or three times before it will register the click and let me see the options for that widget. There's no tactile feedback when pressing or swiping on the device, swiping through the pages, which I feel is a big, big miss. It's hard to know if a press has been registered without feeling it. And there's also no way to know the state of a device linked to a hotkey. After pressing the mic mute toggle, for example, it's really useful to show for the, the button that you've just pressed to show whether the mic is muted or whether it's live. As it stands with the way it works now, I just don't have a clue. So in conclusion then, I came into this review pretty excited. I'm a big fan of devices like this. My Stream Deck has become a must have device on my desktop for me, and I use it every single time I'm on my PC without fail. I had visions of configuring the Widget Dash to do a lot of what I do on my Stream Deck, but sadly with the current software implementation, that's just not possible. But that's not to say it won't ever be possible. It's just depending very, very heavily on how much love G-Skill give to this device and its development going forward. The hardware behind the Widget Dash is pretty good. The screen is nice and crisp and vibrant. It's built well and it looks good. But like I've said in many reviews before, it's the software that counts. And as it stands right now, it's missing some pretty key features. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to Kit Guru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video, you'll find links to our merch store, our Patreon page, our Discord server, and our website if you want to check any of that out. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. This has been the Widget Dash from G Skill. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.